Welcome. Welcome to this talk in CFD modeling in hydraulic engineering. Talk which was presented by Professor Hubert Johnson and Dr. Sophia Lane in 2019 in Australia as part of the seminar series of the Queensland Division of Engineers Australia. So first, we need the relevant industry sponsor need to be acknowledged. Some information on the first speaker. Further information on the second speaker. The table of contents. So let's start from the beginning. This talk is about hydraulic engineering. What is hydraulic engineering? Hydraulic engineering is the science of water in motion on its interaction with the surrounding environment, air, sediment, aquatic life. Some of the challenge are the wide range of application from biology, geographical science to engineering, the broad range of length on time scale, for example, time scale from less than a second in terms of the turbulent time scale, to more than 10 to the 9 seconds for some long oceanic current. On this very broad range of relevant time on length scale constitute a gigantic challenge. So why modeling? Modeling is basically used to predict the full-scale prototype performance of a system. During design, during construction, during operation after failure. For example, the bottom photograph shows the scale model of the Paradise Dam on its spillway following some damage to the stilling basin in 2013. Hydraulic modeling may take place in very different ways. A traditional approach has been physical modeling using geometrically scale model. It's one of the oldest form of hydraulic modeling in use for several millennia, based typically upon some fundamental principle developed during the 19th century, in particular by Chesey, Reich, Bazin, and Fro. In Queensland, the first systematic hydraulic physical modeling was undertaken since the 1950s under the leadership of late Professor Gordon Micah. Importantly, physical modeling requires a sound application of the basic concept of dimensional analysis on geometry, kinematic, and dynamic similarity. Because the physical model data have to be extrapolated at full scale on their potential scale effects. Scale effects, which could be reduced using distorted scale model or using the inferent fluids between model and prototypes. Interestingly, we have seen in the last 10 years a regain of interest in physical modeling linked to the limitation of numerical models on the need for high quality validation data set for computational dynamics. The second form of algebraic modeling is theoretical modeling or analytical modeling. One approach, well known during the 18th or 19th century, has been ideal field flow theory or potential flow theory. Well applied, for example, on the right to sluice gates, spillway crest, and even the inlet and outlet of any major last events. Another form of theoretical modeling is the Poiseuille flow, the analytical solution of the net stock equation for laminar flow. We may also use some simple Crandall mixing length turbulence model to derive analytical model of turbulent flow. In open channel hydraulics, some traditional form of theoretical modeling constitutes the backwater equation developed in 1828, the Bellanger equation for hydraulic jump developed in 1841, both being developed by a French engineer, Jean Baptiste Bellanger, whose name is engraved on the Eiffel Tower. There's, of course, for unsteady open channel flow, the seven equation on the Boussinesque equation. And in more recent times, there have been some development, theoretical development, in relation to critical flow condition on dam breakway. 
A third form of hydraulic modeling is numerical modeling or computational modeling. Some are based upon death at large model, used, for example, for flood modeling, using the seven equation, or the Businesk equation. Another approach is to solve the differential form of the conservation of mass on conservation of momentum, an adiastic equation, that is CFD modeling. And if we time average an adiastic equation, we find in particular some additional terms that need to be resolved with the Reynolds average and adiastic equation. There are different ways to model turbulence using CFD modeling, ranging from simple key epsilon model to detached a dissimulation, but importantly, the selection of the correct turbulence model is very closely linked to the turbulence typology. We don't use the same type of turbulence model for a smooth rectangular channel or a channel equipped with buffers. And of course, the different approach is to use direct numerical simulation, very expensive and currently limited to Reynolds number less than 10 to the 5, and it's not applicable at full scale. Of course, there is a fourth approach, field data. And there, there's a conundrum. Field data are very expensive. Sometimes it's unsafe. And in other situations during a total disaster, it's nearly impossible to deploy. There are also some questions about data quality and data quantity. But we need to remember that field data are uppermost important because nature is the final job. So let us look at hydraulic modeling in the context of upstream, upstream fish passage in standard box culvert. The culvert is a covert channel beneath an abutment designed to pass water. And in the context of fish, it has been well known that culvert adversely impact on the fish passage for a number of reasons. And all this being closely linked to the targeted fish species. We see here on this bottom video, a small fish swimming against the current, trying to shelter in the bottom corner of this smooth channel. In the context of this talk, we are looking at an application where our focus has been small body mass native fish species on juvenile of other species. Fish with a total body length of less than 100 to 150 millimeters on a swimming speed of less than 0.3 to 0.6 meters per second. Current guidelines are unrealistic. I assume that the bulk velocity of a road crossing has to be less than 0 0.3 meter per second, and in practice, are never applied. So, of course, we should ask ourselves should we do something? No, it's not a long term solution. We could, in one hand, use some buffers, which often lead to a drastic reduction in discharge capacity and hence an increase in cost of the structure. Or we can build a bridge, which is even more expensive. We can splash a lot of money. For example, this structure where the retrofit for $130,000 are improved to some extent fish percent, but reduce the discharge capacity. Is it acceptable? We propose, and we have been pushing for new design guidelines for fish friendly box culvert based upon three basic concepts. First, we are focusing on smooth box culvert, no buffer, no pertinence, to minimize cost and for simplicity. Secondly, we propose an optimization at two levels, optimization in flood capacity at design discharge and optimization in terms of fish passage at less than design discharge, in line with a number of European and North American values. On third, we propose to deliver sizable low velocity zone. Low velocity zone highlighted in blue shape in the bottom right cross. Indeed, experimental observation conducted at the University of Queensland by the Civil Engineering Group have shown that fish swim preferentially in the bottom corners, as shown on this photo and sketch on here. Here, we see some of the trajectory of one of these fish in a smooth rectangular channel. You can see that for the duration of the record, which was an incomplete record limited to five minutes, the fish swam primarily, sorry, 15 minutes, the fish swim primarily in the corner for all the time. So the fish swim, mainly in the bottom corner, we need to have a slight understanding of turbulence in box culvert barrel. 
in particular at less than this entry. This was undertaken for numerical modeling, CFD modeling, because fish swim next to the wall on the bottom corners on the right of where the fish to thrust itself against the floor is proportional to the cube of the velocity. Some initial work was done with different type of boundaries on different type of turbulence model, showing mark the need for markedly different turbulence model depending upon the turbulence state. In the current context, we focus on the CFD modeling of a smooth box culvert, as illustrated here with the inlet in the foreground, the outlet in the background. The key aspect of any form of numerical modeling is a verification and validation. Verification deal with the mathematics, the validation deal with the physics. On each rely upon a comparison with experience. So let's look at the validation. Let's look at a comparison between numerical modeling, CFD modeling, on, field, on laboratory experiments in a large and near full scale channel in a smooth box culvert. Generally, we find fairly good agreement in terms of the face of us as illustrated here with the numerical modeling in red, the experimental data in blue. In terms of the velocity, we solve the Navier-Stokes equation and we use the Reynolds at the large Navier-Stokes approach. Example of resultation here with the velocity map, CFD map on the row left, experimental data on the right. A few differences, but not that bad. And if we look more closely at velocity profile at close distance from the bed, from the sidewall, sorry, 20 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 80 millimeter from the sidewall, we see overall some very good agreement overall between the CFD, numerical work in blue, and the experimental data in red. That's for one discharge. And here, other example of good agreement for a different discharge. So altogether, we have conducted CFD modeling for a wide range of configuration. And the result are shown here, where the result here shows the proportion of low velocity zone as a function of the relative velocity, relative to the bulk velocity. And altogether, if we combine both physical and numerical modeling, as shown here on the right, we can obtain a design chart linking the percentage of the flow area where the velocity is less than the percentage of the bulk velocity. Altogether, both physical and numerical modeling shows that high tail water depth at less than design flow contribute to slower barrel velocity and in terms of positive in terms of fish percent. On the other hand, a larger flux will lead to faster barrel velocity, and this is negative in terms of fish percent, while a larger number of cells, which may lead to a smaller flux, could all together provide a reduction in upstream flooding. Reduction in upstream flooding induced by the fish running design, which in itself would lead to a lesser total cost of the structure. So in conclusion, hydraulic modeling may be undertaken by different ways, using physical models, theoretical models, numerical models, and we should not forget about field data. Computational fluid dynamics is an emerging approach in operational hydraulics. It is challenging because of the complexity of the flow with a very broad range of time on length scale. And it requires high level of expertise from the individual undertaking numerical modeling. And it relies upon detailed validation. Validation is indeed one of the most important steps of any form of CFD modeling in hydraulic engineering. CFD validation is closely linked to the top of validated parameter on the quality of the validated asset. Here, we focus on low velocity zone, and our focus for the validation was hence on the velocity map. Velocity validation, again, free surface data, give us confidence in terms of the free surface data only. Validation against center line, velocity profile, give us confidence 
on center line velocity estimate only. An accurate estimate of velocity requires validation of the entire velocity field. So at the beginning of the talk, some of you may have thought that the CFD modeling of smooth box culvert would have been very easy. But when we applied the design of fish-friendly culvert, for which we need to model accurately the velocity, known velocity zone, CFD modeling is not that trivial. We are facing a conundrum in one way. Culverts are further than nothing new. Hydraulic is a very mature thing. But the development of fish-friendly, cost-effective culvert design adapted to ocean condition is a major challenge. Here is some relevant bibliography. Thank you very much.